So, <laughs> Shank Uyghur, and now you're making the rounds. You're, you're everywhere. It's like chlamydia. I see you everywhere now. You're on Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> and I mean, it's complimentary. By the way, you got yourself checked, right, after the debate? Because you went in deep. So, what <laughs> did you... <laughs> what <laughs> you saw the ride? You bought a ticket anyway. What what has what been? What am I doing with my life, man? <laughs> holy, holy moly! Um, wow. For people who haven't watched it, give us kind of behind the scenes. What was it like for you prepping, getting ready? What did you expect? We have Dinesh D'Souza on next, which we'll talk about with him. It was a big turning point in the Chank thing because he yeah. always went low. What were you expecting? Yeah, so I think that, uh, you know, I'd watched the last couple of debates. I always kind of scout out my opponents in debates. So I'd watched Chank's debates with uh, Ann Coulter, and then I watched his debate with Dinesh. And it seemed like it was the same tactic over and over, which was he would pull some quote from 10 years ago that somebody said, and then he would, and then he would say, well, I demand that you defend this. And then as soon as they start defending it, he would immediately swivel to crowd, like physically swivel to the crowd and then say, what he's really saying, he's racist. Right. That, that was the that was the routine. <laughs> See, I hear your uh, impressions and, so, and I wonder what I'm doing with my life. But I, I want you to continue. Yeah, exactly. So I so I prepped for it like that was what was going to happen. Like uh, like he was going to come after me, you know, with quotes that are 15 years old and try and take something out of context. And so I had, you know, with me. A, a stack of crap that was just like I, I was I was fully prepared. If he if he had gone low, then we would have talked Armenian genocide. For That's what I was going like, to ask that was, you. That, that was my immediate follow up. Was Armenian genocide included? Yeah, I mean that, that there was definitely material there. If he had, if he had called me an Islamophobe, uh, I would have read quotes that he had stated about Islam back in 2005. Like I I really had prepped it, uh, and so I was ready to go. And I think two things sort of threw him off. One was that in the green room I was very cordial to him, but I don't think that would have mattered to him too much. I think that what really threw him off is that the last couple of times with Ann and with Dinesh, when he did those debates, there were it was it was definitely a majority Young Turks Army room, right? Yeah. It was definitely his people, uh, and so you can play to your people when when your people are there. You played them when he walked out i mean first of all the crowd that showed up for my town hall was supposed to be like 300 people they didn't move the room because it was a thousand people who showed up and then for the debate they originally had it slated for a thousand person room and three thousand people showed up and probably two-thirds of them were people who were fans of the show yeah. so that meant that he walked out and he got booed and so i think in that moment he realized okay if i go low and shapiro hits me with armenian genocide it could i mean it could legitimately end my career. I mean, it could be a serious I, I problem. Don't think, I don't think that were, there was that amount of forethought. I think uh, he had just seen the feedback from the Dinesh thing. We, you know, we'll have Dinesh on That's afterward. That's possible, too. Dinesh is, is obviously a, a formidable debater, he, but he's used to a certain level of decorum with, like, Hitchens, or I think he would debate with Dawkins. Even though they would vehemently disagree, they wouldn't go, your wife divorced you, it's bullshit. You know, that wasn't what they did. Right. Um, and, uh, by the way, did you at any point when he was – literally say, and I'm not misusing literally, but when he was literally saying, of course, did you feel like you were possibly debating my impression of, of Jank? Did it cross and your there, mind? There were, there were a couple points where I was, where I, I started grinning because it's like <laughs> all of a sudden you know, Crowder's in my head and I'm just looking across the room and it's like, it's like those old Popeye cartoons where you're stuck on a rowboat with somebody and they start looking like a hamburger and then I'm looking across the stage and suddenly Cenk, uh, Cenk looks exactly like Steven Crowder in the Cenk outfit shouting, of course, Google it. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, listen, it, I, I was happy with it, with it just because I was happy he stayed substantive. I mean, for an hour, it was actually a pretty substantive debate. I mean, we did health care and we did taxes. And it was only at the very end he tried to drop in the Southern strategy crap, which, of course, doesn't fly with me because I know too much about that stuff. So yeah. it was uh, he tried that with, with Dinesh for an hour. And every time Dinesh tried to get a, a word in edgewise, he would then demagogue Strom the issue. Strom Thurmond! Uh, Strom Thurmond! You're bullshit! That was what he would do. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it, there, was, there was not a lot of that. And I was, I was sort of shocked by that. I mean, it was really... It was shockingly cordial. It was shockingly formal. Um, and uh, I thought that it was it was a good discussion. I mean, I, I thought that, you know, if, if I had to rank my performance, I thought I did pretty well. Um, but I thought that it was it was not what it was with Anne or with Dinesh. It was not yeah. just him getting up there and shouting well, at I, me and then me being taken aback or anything like that. And I think there are two reasons for that. I think you were ready for this. I think a lot of people there was sort even just two years ago it was the era of, well, well, we're legitimate media. And so Young Turks were just seen as YouTubers. And now we know that they're every bit as big and influential as traditional media. So we've done our homework. So that where you were prepared for it, you understood what what it is that they brought to the table. And I also think, again, there was a turning point where people have realized that that's what Chank does and people have seen his playbook. But I do want to ask you some more questions afterward. I wouldn't necessarily say he was super substantive or that it was unbelievably cordial. Uh, but I do, well, I think you were, but I do want to, let, let's roll a couple of clips. Let's see the first one for people who haven't watched the debate. Please go watch it. I think they have the whole debate up at dailywire.com. Uh -huh. A couple of highlights. Let's see the first one. If, if money was speech, well, then if you go to a hooker and you say, oh no, uh, officer, I was just talking to her. Okay, <laughs> money is not speech. 
Final point here. When you say money in politics is bad, again, I ask you, Buddy Romer gave you $4 million to start TYT. What did he expect in return? Should he not have given you money? Was the money not speech? It was just money, after all. It was just like a hooker, I assume. So are you the prostitute? How did this work? It is every bit as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> Call it uh, a cultural divide there, but uh, we apologize, Ben. <laughs> um, but that was pretty, I think it was substantial because he was trying, I wouldn't say getting personal, but again, trying to imply character flaws of manipulating elections, and you flip that on him. So I think even when he was trying to present a somewhat cordial appearance that wasn't what was really happening, 